What does it take to be a champion? To be better than all the competition? Preparation. Commitment. Execution. An obsession with perfection. To create the ultimate racing thoroughbred allows no compromise. In sport, the name of Wild Oats has become synonymous with the relentless pursuit of success. Three consecutive Rolex Sydney to Hobart victories have made Bob Oatley's Wild Oats one of the most dominant marks in the sporting world. And following in its wake, the horse which also bears this proud name. Good breeding is to a thoroughbred what good design is to a racing yacht, the foundation upon which all future success is built. And in the heart of Australia's Hunter Valley, 250 kilometres from Sydney, the Edding Lassie Stud is where the latest winner from Bob Oatley's stable took shape. Established more than 150 years ago, it's produced countless classic race winners and set new standards for achievement. And recently there's been a very special addition to the Oatley dynasty. We originally uh, called him Wild Oats after Bob's boat, who has been extremely successful winning the uh, Rolex Sydney to Hobart yacht race for the last three years, going for his fourth attempt this year. Wild Oats' full brother, God's Own, was a classic winner down in Melbourne, winning the Caulfield Guineas. And we're hoping Wild Oats can uh, reach the same sort of fame that that horse reached when he was racing. In a career that spanned over 60 years, Wild Oats' owner, Bob Oatley, has succeeded in everything from coffee growing to wine producing, and now resort development. But sailing is his passion, and one race his obsession. It really started with the first canoe I bought, which was very cheap and very ugly. And uh, I made sails for it myself and set it up with a fin case and started to sail it, which was easier than paddling. I got sick of paddling it. And that developed to dinghies and then to a 12-foot skiff, which was so much fun. It's been my major sport ever since. In 2005, Bob Oatley commissioned designers Reichel Pugh to create Wild Oats 11, a 98-foot Super Maxi that for the last three years has made one race its own. The Rolex Sydney to Hobart race is, without a doubt, the, the major race in the world for me. As a sailor, I would say in this part of the world it's the most important race to win and perhaps the hardest to win. The breezes can be so different on any sector of the race and it's uh, really a, an enormous challenge. Only one boat had ever won the Sydney to Hobart three years in a row, until Wild Oats that is, last year. And if the desire to achieve an unparalleled four in a row is an obsession for Oatley, Wild Oats is an addiction for those who sail her. I just love the horsepower of Wild Oats, you know, it's, they're amazing machines and um, you know, we've been selling America's Cup boats and all those, you know, a lot of boats all our lives, you know, but there's nothing like these things at sea. You know, we put a new lighter bulb on the boat, which has made the boat a lot faster downwind, which is exciting. And, um, you know, we put some new ballast, water ballast systems in. So, you know, we're sort of set up really well for any conditions Mother Nature throws at us. Wild Oats' closest rival for line honours is Scandia, the super maxi from Melbourne. Skippered by Grant Warrington, it won in 2003 
and is now heading south for the sixth time. Also in the hunt to be first across the line is race organizer Matt Allen's Itchy Bark, with podium finishes in both 2006 and 2007. It could have an outside chance if the race becomes an upwind battle. He may not have the budget or the technological edge of his super maxi rivals, but Andrew Short's ASM Shockwave 5 could still spring a few surprises if the weather goes his way. I've got a great team of guys that sail for the love of the sport rather than for the money. They, none of them get paid. And uh, so for those reasons, yeah, we're a bit of an underdog, but I was lucky enough to jag a good boat for the right price and hopefully have a good chance of taking the win. The boat and the light stuff, it's very competitive on handicap. Um, so if it's going to be a lighter race, super maxis like Scandia and Wild Oats should clear out. But um, if it's going to be a windier race, well, they have to slow down and there's more things that can go wrong on them. So that's when our boat might have a chance with line on it. From the start line in Sydney's world famous harbour, the fleet begin their gruelling 628 mile journey south across Bass Strait before reaching the finish line in Tasmania's capital, Hobart. Before the start, the traditional briefing for the crews. But this year, an added poignancy. Good morning, I'm Matt Allen, the Commodore of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, and I'd like to welcome you all to the race briefing for the 64th Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. This year's race marks the 10th anniversary of the ill-fated 1998 Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Five yachts sank in a race that changed our sport forever. May I ask you all to join me in a minute's silence to remember the lives that have been lost during and because of the race since 1945. In 1998, hurricane force winds ripped through the fleet as massive waves and 100 mile per hour winds wreaked devastation. Six lives were lost as the rescue services battled to save the stricken competitors. But out of tragedy came hope for the future. So many changes have been made to the way the race is conducted by the club. The safety standards have changed enormously. The technology and the experience of 98 have combined to creating a much safer race. In 98, a lot of the crews found themselves retiring from the race and actually sailing back through the centre of the storm. So the technology these days allows us to help the crews to avoid that bad weather. Start day, and with just a few hours before the gun, time for last minute goodbyes and final preparations. For the faster boats, Hobart should be less than two days away, while for the smaller yachts it could mean twice that time at sea. The Line Honours Trophy may be out of reach for all but a few, but the Tattersall's Cup for the overall winner on handicap remains the glittering prize for the whole fleet. And on Wild Oats, a final call to arms. Well, boys, everything's been said, can be said, I think. Just get there in one piece and you'll win. That, I think that's the boat will do the rest for you. The countdown to the start has begun. This afternoon is going to be 10 to 15 knots on a slight swell, but will be increasing as the land hots up later in the afternoon. And tomorrow's forecast for southern coastal waters, very good news for the front runners, increasing to 30 knots, and that two to three metre swell is perfect surfing weather for the big boats. Just be ready for anything, OK? Still at, I know what's happening, OK? Attack in a minute. Stand by to attack. You're right, boys? 14. Get up there. I want to get up there. I want to get up there. One to go. Attack. Keep up, Valerie. Full speed. Let's go. Ready. He's mine. 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 Trim up, trim up, trim up, Go on. I'd say that's a clear start. 
Sheets on, it's liftoff. Will it be a new race record for Wild Oats, who's won the start at that dead end? Wild Oats 11 fires off the start line, taking the fleet out of Sydney Harbour as thousands line the shore for a grandstand view. Scandia no match for her super maxi rival as they race to be first out of the heads and into the open ocean. There is no stopping Wild Oats. She has treated her rivals in the start of the 2008 Rolex. Chasing hard in Scandia, but Wild Oats 11 setting the pace in this year's race. The water's churning as 100 boats jockey for position. The great race has begun, and leading the charge, the ultimate racing thoroughbred. We're just over 18 minutes into the race, and it's Wild Oats leading the way from Scandia in the Rolex for 2008. For the first time ever, Switzerland has an entry in the Rolex Sydney to Hobart. Dario and Sabina Schwerer have spent the last six years on a unique expedition, climbing the world's highest mountains and sailing the oceans, using only the power of the human body and nature. They're also sharing their message of renewable energy on the Top to Top project with the school children of the world along the way. Pachamama, a 50-foot cruiser, has become the family home for the last few years. Although Salina and Andri cannot participate in the race, they're as comfortable on the water as any professional. We have done so far uh, about 30,000 nautical miles. Salina has 12,000 and Andri has about 6,000 nautical miles. Uh, with two years old, that's not bad. <laughs> They grow up on the boat, that's their home, and they don't know anything else, so they are really, really good. They, they climb and take the ropes and, and do things, so they are really uh, adapted to the boat and they, they love it. Yeah. Yeah. I just cannot believe that we are now here and joining this Rolex Sydney to Hobart yacht race. The battle for overall honours is as competitive as ever. And Yendiz, a Chinese-built 55-footer, is one to watch. And of all the skippers heading south, one has more incentive than most to get to Hobart. The first member of the Ross family arrived unwillingly in Hobart in December 1836. Courtesy of a court in Inverary, Scotland, she had a free seven-year holiday in Hobart. Once we discovered that, we acquired the sale number, 1836. Ironically, you know, end up in the same place as the sort of family started. It just means a lot, really. We've built this boat to try and win overall. It's an extremely good boat, very, very strong team, and we're well prepared and highly motivated, so the weather's the weather. The only authority we have is how we respond to it. It doesn't matter who you are, right? The weather's the weather and has the last say. As the fleet make their way down the New South Wales coast, the race record-breaking conditions have not quite materialised. Yendes are early leaders on handicap, and life is good. So we're about 36 miles east of Ulladulla. Uh, we've got about 22, 20 knots of wind out of the north or east. We're currently lying second in the IRC. We've got uh, the TP-52s back there and uh, Quantum out here, so they're our main competition. Behind the Supermaxes, the battle for third is heating up, with Shockwave 5 just six miles behind Itchy Barn. It's coming up to 6pm, we're uh, charging along doing seven and a half, eighteen 18 knots. It's been a beautiful afternoon, the sun's shining, the breeze is nice, we're making good miles, you know, direct towards uh. Hobart. Shares are up, things couldn't be much better at the moment. In the race for the Tattersall's Cup, 2002 winner Bob Steele's Quest, a TP52, is making an early impression. But there's a long way to go. At the front, Mark Richards keeping a tight rein on Wild Oats as she powers her way downwind in pursuit of the four in a row, with just a beam of her Scandia. The first night at sea, a time for repairs, rest and racing. So far, the race is following form, but in the early hours of day two, 
wild oats begin to slow. Debris around their keel puts the brakes on. And Scandia sees the opportunity to take the lead off Gabo Island. The Bass Strait and over 300 nautical miles still lie between the Supermaxes and Hobart. But in a few days, the dockside and harbour will be buzzing as thousands journey south to see the fleet arrive. And for many, their first port of call is a classic part of Hobart history. The hotel itself was built in 1846, so it has a massive history with the maritime industry here. The tradition for the Rolex Sydney Hobart is that you must pass customs to have completed the race. We're not really about who wins it. It could be Grant Warrington on Scandia or Mark Richards on Wild Oats 11. The boys will be in here celebrating. They'll be in their crew shirts. They are celebrities for that period of time, so the people of Hobart embrace it. We hope the weather's great for them and uh, roll on the celebration. No celebrations yet on board Scandia as they sight the Tasmanian coast for the first time they're still hanging on to the narrowest of leads over wild oats. Just seven miles separate the two. Wild oats have shaken off the debris around their keel and are starting to get back into their stride. They won't give up their crown easily. And ASM Shockwave's Southern Ocean sleigh ride continues. Here we are into our second day on the ASM Shockwave. We're just off the Tassie coast, um, just off St Helens, currently lying in uh, third place over the line and I believe we're still in the top ten on handicap, so pretty happy with the way the boat's going at the moment. Uh, we can't slacken off though because we've still got um, Itchy Barns only about seven and a half miles astern of us, so we're uh, pushing hard to try and keep ahead of us. The upwind conditions that Itchy Barn need to really press home their advantage still haven't materialised. But for most of the fleet, the champagne sailing of this year's Rolex Sydney to Hobart is a welcome change as they push southwards. At the back of the fleet, things have not been so easy for Pachamama. A threatening weather system forced them to take shelter in Eden, and more bad weather is on its way. After resuming the race, Dario and Sabina discover there will soon be an addition to their expedition crew. Sabina is expecting a baby, and so they decide to return to Sydney. The most important now is that we, we get there safely. Scandia have seen their lead gradually ebb away as with each hour, wild oats gain valuable boat speed and close the gap on their rivals. With just over 100 miles to the finish, wild oats surge level. And as Scandia sail into a hole, wild oats grab back the lead. For any sailor in the Rolex Sydney to Hobart, one of the most welcome sights is the Iron Pot Lighthouse, marking the entrance to the Derwent River and the home stretch into Hobart. Built in 1832, it's been a powerful symbol to sailors for generations. I've done 14 Sydney Hobart races. Getting to a safe haven after being bashed around at sea and coming around the Iron Pot it was like coming home every time. It was fantastic. You know, you, once you turned the iron pot, you know, you're home. As wild oats pass Tasman Island and head towards the iron pot and the Derwent River, their lead over Scandia is secure. After one day and 20 hours at sea, Wild Oats 11 enters the final furlong ahead of the Rolex Sydney to Hobart fleet. The record may have escaped them this year, but after the closest of battles with Scandia, the victory is all the sweeter. For Bob Oatley, the four in a row has become a reality. Oh, oh. 
An emotional reunion between owner and skipper as the scale of their achievement dawns. and uh, I have to say that you know, the first three quarters of the race we were behind Scandi the whole way and um, we really had our work cut out for us but uh, going into last night the boys did a fantastic job we must have done 60 sail chains in the last 24 hours and um, you know here we are yeah, where we were going to be. An hour behind Wild Oats Scandia second again but possibly their best performance ever as they so nearly achieved the unthinkable it's never as good if you don't uh, win at the end of the day, but uh, certainly the guys did a great job and uh, we didn't make too many mistakes. We're on the right side of every shift and it was really just the parking lot that really wrecked our race in the end. Matt Allen's Ichiban closes out the podium, but fourth place for ASM Shockwave, no disappointment. This one would have to be without a doubt the most enjoyable one for sure. I've, the best I've had so far has been a third over the line. I've fourth this time, but the third was on somebody else's boat. This is the best I've done with my own own boat, so very happy with that. And finishing barely four hours after Wild Oats 11, Quest, skipper Bob Steele joining the exclusive club of two-time overall winners. Well, the Rolex that did a Hobart yacht race this year was very kind to us. It was probably the easiest race I've done in 18. Having said that, there were parts that you wish, you know, maybe you were somewhere else. But it was a fantastic race and uh, we were here in record time. So we're very pleased and the crew, as I said, fantastic. Over the next three days, the rest of the Rolex Sydney to Hobart fleet make their way down the Tasmanian coast to 42 degrees south. And in Hobart, the crews receive the warmest welcome in offshore sail as thousands gather for the annual celebration. For the hundreds of sailors who make it to the finish, it's time to share stories of an epic race. And perhaps dream of their victory 12 months on. How much does it mean to me? Well, it's the best toy I've ever had, and ever likely to have. It's a fantastic boat. By winning four Rolex Sydney to Hobart yacht races, Wild Oats 11 has become a truly classic winner. And the tradition and name look set to continue with the next generation of racing thoroughbreds. Next time, we're in Miami, USA, to look at what it takes to create a championship-winning team with Jim Richardson's Barking Mad. <laughs>